Welcome to Language Arts. Today we're going to be reading a really short piece called Climbing Skull Mountain. It's an action narrative. And our learning target is this. I can make inferences to determine a character's traits. In literature and life, talk is cheap. And it's your actions that really speak to your character and who you are. And so in our story, Climbing to Skull Mountain, there's two brothers and they behave very differently. Um, to the same situation. And so as a reader, you're you're going to be picking up clues. That's what it means to make an inference. The author's not going to come out and scream in your face, wow, this kid is this way and this kid is this way. But you're going to look at what they do, how they behave, and determine what is that character's traits. And then, which kid are you more like? I like to hold up literature to our own lives and always ask ourselves, just kind of like get our heartbeat and our pulse on different moral and ethical issues. What do you think? What would you have done? And then in language arts, we always circle back and spiral to different techniques and keep working on them and revisiting them. So it's a, today is a revisit of mood. The author of this piece, Kristen Lewis, she really does a great job setting the scene. And we remember that mood is all about the, the atmosphere, the ambience, how the author takes us to a place and what it feels like to be there. And Mrs. McCaskey last week did a lot of great work with adjectives, fireball word choices. So you'll notice those today too. But first, I want to um, just have some little conversations among among your crew, make a little text to life connection before we read. And so I have a little, have you ever? All right, so throw your hand up. Have you ever trespassed on property, gone tooling around in an abandoned building or a warehouse or onto some land that you shouldn't have been? Who's done that? I know my brother in the neighborhood, boys and I, we used to um, go play around in Maranatha up in their summer homes and we're building a fort in, in, in these woods by this this house. And we thought the lady was gone for the season, but oh no, she came out with her, her high heels and her little yappy dog and we started chasing us up the dunes and we we're clawing our way up there. You kid. Okay. Trespassing. That happens in our story. Second, have you ever found a skull or a bone? Um, my brother, before he was a doctor, he was a medical examiner, and he was called to a scene where a fisherman's foot washed up on the shore of Lake Michigan with the shoe on, and he connected it to the body, which was on the other side of Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. So there's that. So this story has a little bit of a creep factor, the finding of some, some physical remnants, some remains. Have you ever taken a risk you knew you shouldn't have? I know you have. I've read your Taking a Risk essays from earlier this year, and those were phenomenal. So we know you've got some risks in your life and more to come. Have you ever followed a friend into trouble? There are some stories. Teachers, you can pause whenever you want to capture a few stories and, and learn more about, um, about your students. Have you ever defied your parents? That's kind of a, a natural thing in life. And in this time in our life, we're kind of pushing up against um, your parents and you're asserting your own independence and kind of taking control of your life a little bit. And so, so there's some rebellion and some risky behavior that teenagers sometimes do because that part of your brain isn't quite developed as the rest. And so we have kids doing ridiculous things with uh, TikTok challenges and swallowing Tide Pods and et cetera. So this story is about risk and it has a great mood and we will begin. I'll show you where to find the pieces that you need. Okay, in Google Classroom, you just have this single document called Climbing Skull Mountain. And as we look at this piece, as we look at this piece, um, there's a link to the story, but let's just preview what we're gonna be asked to find in, in our work today. Number one is list four powerful action verbs. That's something that we, we captured in our learning earlier this year, back in trimester one. But Fireball action verbs, and a verb is, is what somebody's actually physically doing, whether you're staggering, sprinting, um, jostling. So I want you to list four that you come across in, in the writing. And what are the what do the um, effect these verbs have? What effect do they have on the story? How do they make the readers feel, or what do they make us think? The second one is all about mood, the ambiance, the setting. Jordan and I traipsed down a dirt road until we came to the foot of the mountain, where a dilapidated wood fence stretched as far as we could see. A faded sign read, no trespassing. So the dilapidated fence, the sign, the warning, what is that mood? Number three, onomatopoeia. And I put in parentheses, that means sound. So when authors want to bring things to life with sensory detail, they put like a drip, drip or sploosh. What sounds are in this piece? And number three, you need a simile, a comparison using like 
or as. So this, the wind was screaming like a wild banshee. So you're comparing two things together. And then um, our big higher level thinking piece is Jordan and Eddie, the two boys in our story, I need you to come up with a character trait. Like what is an adjective that you would apply for Jordan? Is he, is he cautious? Is he risky? Is he, um, is he thoughtful? What kind of kid is he? And same for Eddie. And then you just need a line. So grab a line that supports that evidence. And then I like text to life, holding this up to, to who you are. Which character are you more like and why? Are you more of a Jordan or are you more of an Eddie in your life? And finally, what is a theme, an overall life lesson we can take away from climbing Skull Mountain? So let's get to it. Scroll to the top and go ahead and click here. Um, our work comes, our piece comes from Scope Magazine. So go ahead and click the link. And the code, as always, is Sailor Crew. So I'll give you a second to pull up our story. So here's our author, um, Kristen Lewis. And when you're ready, you can click on presentation view and that'll have it. So um, your screen looks like this and it's really nice. You can see the whole, the whole text um, right there for you. So climbing Skull Mountain, we notice it is not a long piece by any stretch, it's short. So it's just two pages. We're gonna preview some vocabulary before we get started here. And then we'll, then we'll go. So the first verb you come across is traipsed. You're traipsing down a dirt road, right? You're just sort of like walking in a real casual kind of manner. You're strolling along. And then these kids come to a dilapidated wooden fence. And that's an awesome adjective. Dilapidated meaning run down, worn out, given up, deteriorating. So that adds to the mood. Our next word is strewn. If something is strewn about, um, it is littered. It is tossed around in a haphazard manner um, about the about the scene, so strewn. And this is the 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 on, only rust colored dirt strewn with rocks the size of basketballs. You have the word mem mesmerized here. If you're mesmerized, you are enchanted. You are drawn to something, like you might be when you're watching the flames of a campfire, mesmerized, and you can't look away. And similar to that is transfixed. You are giving your full attention kind of one of those awe dropping kind of moments. You are transfixed on something. Um, you are stunned with horror and you are aghast, this mouth dropping moment. So those are our vocabulary words. And as we read, I really want you to think about Eddie's character versus Jordan's. What are these two kids like? Who are you more um, like in your own personality? And then identify the mood. So. I will zoom in and I will begin and I'm just going to read part of the story and then I'm going to turn text over to you and then your goal today is to complete um, those six questions. So it's not much but, but some good thinking with literary devices like similes, onomatopoeia, great verbs, mood, and then higher level, what is the theme in analyzing characters. So we begin, okay? Back then, I didn't talk much. My big brother Jordan did enough of that for the both of us. When he talked, I listened. When he had an idea, I followed along. That's just how it was, at least until that summer, that summer day before eighth grade. The day began with mom confiscating our phones and ordering us to go outside. After mom left for work, Jordan turned to me. We're going up Skull Mountain, he announced. I gave him a look. It was a terrible idea, even for him. Eddie, please, Jordan snorted. Don't tell me you believe all that stuff about ghosts. I shrugged. We all knew the story that anyone who tried to take anything off that mountain would suffer a terrible fate. Legend had it that hundreds of years ago, some explorers found rubies up there. They returned with pickaxes to cut them out of the rocks, but a sudden storm buried them alive. No trace of them was ever found, except for one thing, a chipped and mangled pickaxe. Now when the wind blows, people say you can hear a clang, clang, clang coming from Skull Mountain, as if those men are still up there with their pickaxes, doomed to bang away at the rocks forever as punishment for trying to take what did not belong to them. It was nonsense, of course. I never heard any clang, 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 and the mountain was only a mile from our house. Still, I didn't want to go, mostly because Mom said it was off limits. But when Jordan opened the door and said, let's go, I didn't say anything. I just followed him. 
So I'm going to pause my reading there. Already you've got some onomatopoeia, you've got some sound here, and you can tell a little bit of uh, what kind of kid Eddie is, right? He's a little bit more cautious. You know, mom said not to. It's a bad idea. I don't want to do it. But yet, he's a follower. Jordan said to do it, so I just followed him. All right, you're going to continue reading the story on your own. And then when you finish, you're back here on the document, finding action verbs, thinking about the mood, onomatopoeia, simile, and then our character analysis. All right, enjoy your work. And then when you're finished, please turn this in. I look forward to reading your responses. Have a great day.